Hey everyone, have a quick video here over our garden. Miss Homesteader on the Hill is going to take you a tour on everything that we've planted this year. And uh, just if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Uh, to, this year has actually been a really um, good turnout for our garden. We did a different method for some of it. Instead of raised garden beds, we did the no dig method with uh, cardboard uh, and then the soil compost on top of that. So it, it turned out really well and hope you enjoy the video. garden update we haven't done any this year sorry about that things have gotten busy and we just haven't had the time but these are some of our purple potted pole beans this is our third year growing these I believe and they are amazing you can see the vines are just loaded down with beans everywhere you look um, these grow really quickly and they produce really well so we love those I got them from Baker Creek but I didn't see them on their website this year so I'm not sure what's going on with that but if you can find these we highly recommend them uh, my brassica bed is kind of gone to pot uh, the cabbage moss got a hold of them with their little caterpillars um, I also planted some green beans here from MI Gardener, they these varieties honestly haven't done so well. I've got um, top crop here, that was a pack of 25, and then I got uh, I don't remember what variety I got over here. I don't see my sign. Oh, is this it? Oh, these are lima beans. Okay, so these are llamas. This is top crop. These didn't do too well. But over here, I've got two more beds. This is top-notch golden wax. You can see those are doing really good. And those are contender over there. So we're really excited about those. I wanted to plant some more beans to get in a really good harvest before fall so I could can them. And I'm really pleased with that. Um, this cucumber variety from MI Gardener has also just gone completely insane. You can see along the back of that trellis there, that is um, a Wisconsin SMR pickling cucumber. It's broken down our little wooden tre trellis twice. Um, so we're going to have to do a more permanent solution for that next time that we plant these next year. And we've got them along the back row there. They're a little bit, looks like they've got some um, like powdery mildew on them probably. I did spray copper fungus out on them last week, so God willing, that'll take care of it as I continue to treat them. But these are crazy. It is August 1st, and I've already canned 75 pounds of these things, and they are still just going strong. So back here, we have more of those purple potted pole beans on the trellis. Down here, I've got some sweet potatoes. Over here, I've got red Kennebec potatoes. This is my first year growing potatoes though, so um, I'm not really sure how it's gonna end up, but we'll keep you updated on that. And then down this way is our tomatoes. So over here, this almost this entire row is called Kentucky Beef Steak. And I have a few little um, tiny Tim down there. These are just crazy how much. Now they are totally blighty, but you can see just off of one plant, they are completely loaded down with tomatoes. We've already harvested from these little guys probably four or five times now. Um, and we've been really pleased with those. I, I just allowed the blight to get away before I sprayed anything on them. So 
Um, I think they'll still manage till the end of the season if I keep up. But then these, oh, I don't want to tear up the little spider web. These are Kentucky beefsteak tomatoes, and look at that. I mean, these guys get huge. I got these. Um, really, I was attracted by the name since it's from our home state, um, but I saw really great reviews on them from Baker Creek, and we have been so pleased. They taste delicious. The fruits get huge. They are very, very productive. I mean, you can just see these plants are loaded down with fruit. So we're excited about that. Um, I've got, see, look at this guy. Look at that. You can't even see my hand from the other side. Um, yesterday I weighed one of these and it was a pound and a half and I did harvest it early we've got some evidence of hornworms already so I haven't sprayed any BT on these in uh, quite a while I need to do that but a pound and a half before it was even fully ready and ripe to be picked um, these are white Tomasol I got those as a free seed variety from Baker Creek and you can see oh here's one that's got the you can see something's been nibbling but if you look at these that's about the color they are when they're ripe and they have a really um sort of a tangy flavor to them we really enjoyed this one as well um butternut squash the squash beetles got a hold of those that's a battle we have every year and really the only way i know how to eradicate those is with seven dust and we're not willing to do that so we <laughs> We fight them every year. We get what we can before they ruin our uh, our squash crops. But then we've got some peppers down here. These are all hot peppers. So these are jalapenos, this one, that one. Then we've got some um, habaneros here. None of these are ready to harvest yet. That's okay, here's one of the Tiny Tom, or is it Tiny Tim? I can't remember. I'll post a link to it down below in the description box from MI Gardener, but look at how much fruit is on this little teeny tiny plant. I think next year what I'm gonna do is grow these in a container and have them spill out over the edge. That way they won't be so prone to blight because they have so much fruit they just completely lay on the ground. Um, and I didn't stake them or anything. So, yeah, definitely going to do these again next year. We've got some bunching onions that are ready to come out. These are poblanos. We've got lots and lots of peppers on that one. I've got some basil and some tulsi here. These were gifts from a very dear friend of mine. This is pokeweed. <laughs> Um, that was just a little volunteer from probably the birds. But then I've got some of these lunchbox peppers. These are doing really good as well. They're totally loaded. Um, and we're just waiting on these to ripen up a little bit. They basically, well, I've got a picture of them. So you can see some of them are starting to turn color a little bit. Uh, oh, here it is. So these are basically sweet little snacking um peppers we're excited about those we love peppers i think this is going to be the first year that we have enough to can with all of our plants they're doing really really well we're so thankful um yeah just super grateful then we have some more tomatoes over here and more peppers so the peppers are in the front part of the row the tomatoes are in the back, and um, next year I definitely see I need to space my tomatoes a little bit further apart. I think that is definitely one of the issues with the blight that we're having. But you learn, and you make adjustments for the year following. So these, I have another, um, I think this is a Kentucky beef steak. And then I've got some yellow pear tomatoes. This one came from M.I. Gardener. These are really, really yummy. Um, this one... I think is another one of the Kentucky beefsteak. Then I've got one Amish paste. We haven't gotten much from that one yet. And then these are, oh yay, <gasps> look at that. So we are actually interrupting the video that you were just watching to place in a new clip because initially when I had found this, 
I had said that these little white things were parasitic wasp eggs. But since then, I've done some more research and found out that the eggs, the mother parasitic wasp actually comes in and lays them right under the skin of the hornworm. And then when the larvae are ready, they come out. So the little caterpillars come out of the hornworm and they spin themselves each one of these little white things is a cocoon you can see this one right here is so cool you can see the little trap door on it where it came out but they come out as adult parasitic wasps and then the life cycle starts all over again with the laying of eggs and so on so we just wanted to show you guys this these are actually really really great to have in your garden because parasitic wasps are um beneficial insects that can help to eliminate such these hornworms such as this one so you see it hasn't moved since we saw it last time it basically just goes into a comatose state and it dies so that is really sad that the hornworms have to die kind of such a miserable death but at the same time it's really great for your garden because this guy i i, I never would have probably seen it um, and the parasitic wasps took care of it for us. So that is so awesome, so interesting. Just wanted to show you guys that and we will get back to the garden tour. Um, you can see our echinacea right over there. And then I had daylilies and um, well, irises, those are more early season. But we've got purple clover in here and those things attract those beneficial insects along with the blossoms on, you see like our, um, uh, squash and beans and things like that and they will kill those worms that destroy your crops so that's really exciting uh, let's see here we've got these are bell peppers this one I'm really not sure what's going on I think it was just a lack of water lack of fertilizer look at his poor little leaves it's been so hot here um, but and I, I have not done super well to water we've talked about an irrigation system next year i'm not sure we'll see we plan on maybe expanding the garden again next year so i think that would be something well worth considering and then we've got corn this variety now i will say i think i planted everything too close because i was afraid i'd run out of room but this was called um let's see atomic orange it was from baker creek and we did not get a single ear of corn to fully mature. So you can see like this one, it's a teeny tiny little bit of bitty guy. Um, so I'll probably just try to buy another pack of these next year. And then this one is called Glass Gem, G-E-M. It's um, supposed to have really pretty colors, pretty colored kernels. And you can see we have a lot of uh, silk showing. But the ears still, they're just not very big. See, compared to my hand, that's thats so tiny. But I think that's because it's, uh, because I planted them too close together. Oh, here we go. Here's one that looks like it might be promising. This one good. So, there we go. So that's basically our garden update so far, August 1st, 2021. Um, oh, out here. So we planted asparagus. This was, again, a gift from the same sister who gave me the, um, let's see, what were those? The basil. And yeah, so I'm really excited about that. We don't have too many perennial types of things planted yet so we don't have any fruit bushes um, or fruit trees or anything like that but I'm excited to have that asparagus row now it's also got a volunteer um, lemon squash plant I'll see if I can get out there and give you a closer look here's the asparagus bed it needs to be weed eated very badly oh yay our lemon squash one of them's ready yep go ahead and twist it off I see another one in Awesome, let's get it. Awesome, that is a lemon squash. Those are from Baker Creek too. We really like those. They grow, oh, I see a squash beetle. Let me get it and feed it to the ducks. Oh, see, it's a squash oh, beetle. Look, here's their eggs. This thing will be gone in a, probably another couple days, but we'll get what we can. There's one over there too. All right, y'all, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour of the garden, how everything's going, and we'll see you tomorrow.